All right, guys, logistic regression, I think video number five. I'm actually doing a pretty good job of keeping these things brief, which is kind of cool. Uh, it's forcing me to uh, stay on task. And Anyway, all right, what I want to look at here is I want to look at the uh, inference for uh, beta 1. And again, what have we done? We calculated our beta 1, which, um, or I'm sorry, our B1. Uh, which was, what was it, 0.165. I've kept everything up over here so we can uh, just keep working with it, uh, 0 0.161. And we saw that if we take E to the 0 0.161, I uh, forget what we get. Let me put that in real quickly. We get 1.17 so we can say that the odds of um, passing the exam um, are 1.17 higher as the uh, number of hours studied increases by one now what I want to do now is I want to get into the inference of uh, 0.161 so we can say when uh, n is large, relatively speaking, we can say that our beta, our b sub k minus our beta sub k, which is usually 1, divided by the standard error for the b sub k, is approximately a standard normal distribution, uh, the z distribution. So guys, let's step back and summarize a few things. So pi is the likelihood of uh, a dependent variable producing an object of a particular class. And we typically set our pi uh, equal to 1. Second thing that uh, I want you to remember, uh, x sub i is our independent variable for the ith case. Uh, beta is the vector of coefficients. Uh, x is an m plus 1 uh, by n design matrix. And uh, L is, of course, the function that we're trying to optimize. We talked about that earlier, and Y must be uh, of the subset, uh, or of the, um, uh, from the set of 0 and 1. Now, back to the formal presentation of our null and alternative hypothesis. If you believe this kind of stuff, so we can say the disease star. Uh, luckily, these values come directly from our from our output. So we can say that um, uh, b sub k is uh, 0.16149 uh, minus uh, our claim about beta one, which is zero. And our standard error we get directly from uh, the output of 0.0. Uh, six, four, nine, eight. You guys, uh, you know, finding these things, uh, I wish time allowed. Uh, uh, the reason I'm not going into the matrix uh, operations is just, just due to time. Uh, I think I've already put up uh, quite a few hours of videos for this class. I think you'll probably agree with me on that. Uh, and I needed to keep this part short. In fact, I even considered cutting it out, but... I think it's such important stuff that I wanted to dive into it uh, at least uh, briefly. Okay, anyway, guys, 2.485 uh, looks familiar. It's given to us right there uh, in the R output. Now, the probability. So what we're doing, we're working with the Z distribution. So we'll calculate a two-tail. So we want to look at the area from 2, 4, 8, 5 and above. And negative 2.485 and below. So if I'm going to do that with R, I'm just going to focus on the lower part because that's uh, that's that's what uh, P norm does. So I have negative 2.485 uh, mean zero standard deviation one, and I want to multiply that by two because we're doing a two-tailed test. And you can see that we get the 0.02 nine 
which is exactly what we get right there. So this, uh, we would say this is significant at the 0 0.05 level. Now, to get a confidence interval, um, it's, again, just about as easy. Uh, <clears throat> The confidence interval for this would be our B sub K plus or minus our what I would call our Z critical times the standard error of B sub K. So for our problem, if we want to calculate a 95% confidence interval, guys, we should know that uh, Z star is equal to plus or minus 1.96 or Z critical for a 95% confidence interval. That is 1.96. So what we could do is 0 0.1615. Uh, don't leave me because something uh, pretty interesting is going to emerge uh, out of this problem. So uh, guys, do the math. I think what uh, you'll get is 0 0.0341 and 0 0.2. All right, now, let's see what happens when we do this with R. And you probably already can tell there's more to it than just uh, what we get. Well, if we go from R, we get 0 0.05 up to 0.31. Well, I don't know about you, but 0.05 isn't the same as 0.03 and 0.31. So we have more. We we have um, um, a uh, um, an interval that's actually shifted, isn't it? It's shifted to the right, which is kind of strange that we would get that. Um, and I don't know about you, but this kind of stuff kind of kind of bugs me when we have a very straightforward interpretation of a confidence interval. And um, um, <laughs> we don't get uh, what what I would think we would uh, would would need to get. So um, before we get into that, let's go ahead and say that um, that the for the interpretation of the interval, what would probably be more helpful So I believe this is 1.035 and 1.335. So the interval for the odds would be somewhere between 1.035 and 1.335 with 95% confidence. If you believe this one. If you believe this one, uh, there would be uh, obviously something else. Now what's really important here is note that we have statistical significance for our beta 1 and note that this confidence interval does not contain 1. Um, and notice that our confidence interval for the straight uh, a result that was not statistically significant which would lead to a uh, confidence interval for the odds that contained 1 which again ind indicates that we do not have uh, statistical significance. Now, um, here's the difference. Um, and I don't know if I'm going to be able to carry this off or not because there's a, um, there's a, uh, a, if, okay. I forget, guys. There's a confidence interval default. Yes. Wow, I did remember. Okay, that's, that's funny. Uh, notice if you use confidence interval default, uh, we get the 0 0.0341 and the 0 0.2889, as we did with the straightforward calculation uh, over here. I wish I could sit here and tell you why that's the case. Uh, I really don't understand. Um, I feel much more comfortable when I calculate, uh, when, I, when I do research or help 
master's level or PhD students with their research, I uh, feel much more comfortable uh, using this than I do this one. I'm really not sure how that uh, calculation is made. And it's something that I remember learning, um, but I just uh, I didn't store it to memory for, for reasons of, uh, <laughs> well, I just didn't. Uh, I had other stuff, uh, diving and cool stuff, right, uh, that I guess I put there instead of storing the reason for the difference so guys that's all i got man it's uh it's just uh, this is um uh, doing this little by little uh keeping it short and sweet so it's all i got